Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And you guessed it, we've got another one page wonder. I am really enjoying using up my stash of 12 by 12 papers, even though I'm also doing some with a more standard size piece of paper as well. But today I have another um, easy fold folio for us. And I've got a couple of samples because you can, you, there are some options on how you do the pockets and even the closure. So this one, um, I used a piece of 12 by 12 Tim Holtz paper that I had. And um, so it's double sided and you know, I really like it. So the cover, used a little piece that I had left to decorate some book page and I put a little quote on there using velcro for the closure I did sew a little wooden button on there just for decoration let's see it's got a pocket it's got a corner pocket on this page another corner pocket with just some little pieces I've tucked in and then another pocket here on the back cover. So again, super easy, just a little different from some of the other ones we've made. I like having different styles to play with. And then you, you know, the it looks so different depending on the paper you choose. This one isn't really decorated yet, but I did a, the closure, a little bit different shape, didn't put a button on it. And then this one, I just added the pot, I just made the pocket shape a little different. Um, but again, you, you could even put um, rectangular pockets. We could do a belly band. There's really some options for, for these two pages on how you do the pockets. This paper's not double-sided, so you do see the white, but I still like it. And this one's just ready for me to decorate. And again, I like just making these up, having them in my stash, and then when I have a journal that I want something extra for, um, it's ready to go. All right, so I'm going to show you how we cut and score and fold these, and we'll decorate this one together as well. So, again, hope you like it. To make the base of the folio, you need one 12 by 12 piece of paper. I will have the measurements and the scoring in the description, like usual, so um, you don't have to worry um, if you, you aren't taking notes or something, you can go and refer back. So the first thing you're gonna do with your 12 by 12 piece of paper is cut it in half at six inches. So that will leave you with a piece that is six by 12, okay? So set that one aside. And then take the second piece that is six by 12, and you're going to want to cut it on the 12 inch side at seven and a half. So now you have a piece that is seven and a half by six. And then this piece is, should be four and a half by six. Four and a half by six, okay? So the four and a half by six piece, this is where you have your flexibility of what kind of pockets you want. Um, and, and if you want a portion of this to decorate the cover or you want to make a little journaling card. So you, this is the piece that I'm just going to set aside until I'm ready to design my journal and not get confused. All right. I'm going to use my scoreboard, but you can score if you prefer using a ruler. And let's score the piece that is seven and a half by six first. So on that piece, on the seven and a half inch side, okay, I want you to score it at um, three and three quarter inches. And this is basically just gonna fold, so that we can fold this in half easily. And we'll, after I start playing with it, I'll decide which, which side of the paper I want um, uh, up, and, up and down. But just fold that piece in half. The scoring just makes it a little bit easier if you're using cardstock weight paper. And then on the piece that is six by 12, easy scoring, we're gonna score it two, six, and 10. And that's it. Easy peasy. So I'm gonna fold on all these score lines as well. And I realized when I got back, I'm going to chat for a second. I realized when I got back from moving my daughter to New York, I 
had prepped and planned, well, I hadn't prepped that much, but planned to do the washi tape idea book video. If you've if you watched that one and I told you guys, yeah, and I'm back from New York, I'm gonna tell you about it. And then I didn't tell you guys anything. I kept crafting and didn't get back to my chatting. So um, just for those of you that are curious, uh, Sarah, my daughter, is all moved into her apartment in Manhattan. Um, it's darling and she's just thrilled with it. It was an easy move because the apartment is mostly furnished, which is really nice. Um, not having to do a lot of furniture. So it was really just her personal things. And then she starts her job on Monday. So it was a quick trip. I was there two nights. Um, we got everything unpacked and decorated, and I think she's really happy um, with the space. So I decided to get back to Virginia. I'm just inking around the edges, everybody, really quick. I think it makes it look nice, so I'm gonna do that really quick for us. Um, but I, got, I decided to get back to Virginia because we're having um, a, a big rain event given the hurricane and so I just wanted to not be driving through that it's not my favorite thing to drive um, it's not it's not hard and it's only about six hours but going across that George Washington Bridge and driving actually into Manhattan is not the most fun thing in the world with um, all the cars and the traffic so anyway but I would do it of course um, for Sarah so we had fun and now um, she's just ready for her adventures. So thanks everybody for your prayers when she was searching for her job and all of those things. And then a quick update on my son. He did have his job interview this week and is hoping to hear something um, by next week. So that's kind of what we're hoping and Hopefully, you know, they decide he's a good fit, but if not, he'll keep looking. Um, and he's currently working, so all of that's fine. Uh, just this would be a, a little bit better job and something he's interested in trying. So if you have time to keep him in your prayers, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, lots of big things happening with these young adults. Now I've got to decide which, which um, pieces of the paper, you know, I want in and on the inside and which I want to be the primary cover. I think I'm gonna have these stripes be the, on the outside of the cover. Okay, so once you have it um, folded in, don't, don't glue these down yet because I, I'm going to show you how we are going to attach this piece to become the inside page. And the other thing that it does is it gives us um, some structure on that back cover as well. Okay, so I am going to want to see the stripes on this one. Let's see how we're going to do it. Maybe like that. And then we'll get to see this pretty design and the flower probably could go either way, but I think it kind of goes up like that. Okay, so... Get your paper the way you want it to be turned for your cover. And then open it all the way up. And I've inked so hopefully you can see everything that I'm doing. And then get your inside page and decide how you want it to lay. And these should be, if you cut your paper right, they should both be exactly six inches. And I'm noticing mine is off. I probably laid it on my paper trimmer. Um, it not very straight. <laughs> it wasn't straight. So I'm just trimming mine off only because I really want it to fit in here well and not be taller than the base of my folio. So if that happens to you, just trim it off like I did. Okay, and this is going to become that inside page. Okay, and then once we get this glued down, this flap will be glued down to make this pocket. Okay, now I have made these where I've left this side open and made this a tuck spot, but because you're right up against the seam and other things, it, it, if you wanna do that, go for it, and then maybe put a piece of writing paper in there and, note, and just remember that it's there. I'm gonna just glue the whole panel down. I'm not gonna turn this into a pocket. So just remember which piece you're actually gluing down, and I'm gonna add glue to this entire side 
and I am just using my Line Co brand PVA glue. And if you're interested in looking at the type of glue and some of the tools I use, you can visit my Amazon storefront. It's linked in the description of my videos. Um, and I am an Amazon associate, which means I get a few little pennies if you make a purchase. Um, but you can just go there to get some ideas. Now you just wanna be careful laying this in. Don't go over this crease line. And I kind of just make sure it's in there. Um, you could come a little closer to this edge if you want to. It doesn't really matter. We we'll just get that squished down really good. And it's not going anywhere. Okay, so now we have a page inside our folio. And we didn't have to sew or do anything. All right, I'm going to glue this pocket down. You guys have probably noticed on these one page wonders in the folios, I do a lot of side pockets like this. They're easy, they're a great space to have, and it gives you a nice, nice um, cover that's nice and sturdy and thick, and it just really works well, I think. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing for the front cover. Now, I was going to mention, and then you'll have a pocket if you want. You could flap it this way and have a pocket on the front cover, and we could do something different on this page. Why don't we do that for this one, just to be different? Now, we'll have to really think through our closure, but that's okay. Um, if you like my original design that I showed you that has the pocket inside the folio, just flip the paper the other way, okay? So then flip the pocket so the pocket's on this side. Don't wanna confuse you guys. Um, and I did this one that way as well and I just had collaged the front of that one. Okay, so now I have something I can do on this page, this page, and this page, right? And then on the cover, um, we'll figure out how we wanna do our closure. Now, I have this piece of paper left to make pockets if I wanna use this for a closure so it's truly you know, just a one sheet wonder. Of course, if you want to, you can make those out of like coordinating papers or a different paper if you want it to have a little more interest um, colors and things like that. So I think what I'm gonna do, and remember this one is four and a half by six, so it's a little bit wider and we're gonna have to kind of just trim it down however we choose to use it, all right? I am going to, I'm going to cut mine first on the um, six inch side. I'm gonna cut it at three and a half inches. And I'm gonna actually make it a three and a half by three and a half square. So if you wanna do yours the way I'm about to do mine, this is a three and a half by three and a half square. I'm gonna cut it on a diagonal so that I get two um, triangles to make myself, wherever I choose to put them, um, a couple of pockets. Okay, so there's different ways I could put those. Could even do something like this, if you want the different patterns, right? We have a, t a pocket here and a tuck spot up there. But I have two of those, and now I have these two pieces. So this will be a good one that I can use to help with my closure, however I choose to do that. And then I still have this piece, which is wonderful, because on one of these pages, I will do, um, just a rectangular kind of horizontal pocket, okay? So I think I want, I think I wanna do that on this, on this page. So I'm gonna measure, this is the shorter page than the cover. This is right at almost three and three quarter inches. I'm going to make my pocket three and a half. So this had left us with a piece that's that four and a half inch wide, and I'm just gonna cut it down to three and a half. And that's gonna be cute. And I, I like that, I've got the stripes here, and then the stripes going in this direction. If you want, cut a little notch out of the pocket, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use a fun punch, a fun punch. Which punch am I gonna use? I can put my hands on. This one's a different shape 
and we'll just make it a fun notch. I'm just eyeballing what I think is the center. And that kind of makes a scalloped opening for my pocket. And again, if you don't have a punch like this, you know, use a circle punch or whatever shape you have an oval. But I kind of like that. So it's the shape that looks like this. It's a really old Stampin' Up one. And it gives us a little scalloped opening that I didn't have to fussy cut with my scissors. So that's fun. All right, just add glue to the three sides. Now this paper is, um, let me grab, I, I, I dug into my stash, and guys, I have so much scrapbooking paper, but I love scrapbooking paper. Um, this is from Graphic 45, and it's the Portrait of a Lady collection. It looks like it was one from 2021. And I have some pieces left, and I have one of the sticker sheets and some of the ephemera pieces, and so I just thought this would be a fun one after I get it assembled, we'll use some of those, those fun pieces to decorate it really quick so you get the idea of how cute these can really turn out. Okay, so I think for this one, this was at three and a half by three and a half square. I'm gonna, again, I could line up, you know, I could do stripes and stripes or I can do this kind of florally, whatever pattern that is. But I'm gonna have the contrast and just do the opposite pattern on up on each of these pages. And again, if you really want a lot more contrast, maybe make two of these. Pick out two pieces of paper that coordinate that you like, chop them up, and then mix up the papers. <laughs> to make all the different little pieces. Okay, now again, this page is more narrow than this page, but that three and a half inch size works perfect on both. So again, just add your glue as always to these two sides. I'm definitely in the I Love Pockets Club. I love having places to put extras. <laughs> And I was even like that back in my kind of traditional, what I think of as traditional scrapbooking days when um, I, I loved to add little, little tuck spots to put things in when I go back and look at the scrapbooks from my kids were little. <laughs> of course, there's a lot of writing in those two. I did a lot of writing, which is good because it's fun to read those memories now. Oh, I really like that. Okay, now for this closure, because this is a pocket, you know, you got a couple of ideas, or I have a couple of ideas. I can just bring it right up to the edge of the pocket, because in the back, you know, that would look good if you want it, wherever you want it, honestly. Now, what I did with this one is I did make a little, um, I don't know what that's called, a little spine, so that if this gets chunky inside, there's lots of room and it can expand. This one, I just folded over and kept it pretty flat. You know, if you know you're gonna squish this or send it in the mail or really tuck it inside something tight, I would skip that and just fold it over. My two cents. All right, so I'm gonna bring this strip, I'm gonna use the whole strip for the closure and I am going to bring it right up to the edge of that pocket. So that's what th determined where I folded this. <laughs> and I'm not worrying about the measurements of this because depending on how you design yours, it might be a little different, okay? And you know, it could be in, in different places. I'm gonna just kind of eyeball and have it a little, a little above center, I think. Now, I could start decorating before I put the closure on, but I'm going to wing it. I'm going to wing it. You can wait to put your closure on until you decorate if you want to. So just add glue to that whole side. You do want to make sure when you're doing these kind of hinge closures, you, you just have at least enough. It doesn't have to be this wide, but I would say at least maybe half an inch on the back just so that it gets a nice closure. 
And of course, I'm gonna use my little Velcro dots. It's my favorite easy way to make a closure. And um, I'm gonna just stick it on there and the closure will be done. I did, on the one where I sewed the button, I did sew the button on before I stuck the Velcro. And that's probably, if you're gonna sew a button, this one, my Velcro is way over here, so it would probably be fine to sew it later. This one was centered in that spot, and the Velcro is actually covering up the back of the strings on that one. Okay, and the way I did this one, I did that same idea of the three and a half inch square, and I got a pocket here and a pocket here, and I had not left a flap on the front cover. So when I cut this three and a half inch square, it left me with this side, this piece and this piece. It left me with a piece that I was able to get these two pieces from. And if you remember on our new one that we've just made, we got two pockets and then this pocket. So this is the piece that, that was on the front. I just kind of wanted to show you why it's different um, and why I had enough to collage on, on that one of the original examples. And we have used up all of the pieces of our 12 by 12 for this one. So like I said, I have these, um, these pieces and so we can start really if we want to spending some time making this look super fabulous um, these will also be cute you know to tuck in I think there's some larger cards and if I trim some of these down they would probably fit in there that's really cute it's like a perfume bottle I'm gonna put that in that pocket these are from this kit. <laughs> they just got they just got mixed in. We got a little some torn pieces. Ooh, isn't that pretty? I think I'm gonna put these lovely ladies on the front. Wonder. Again, I didn't really plan out the the stuffing of of this. Um, but they sure are pretty. Wonder. Again, this is where if I had been thinking about my decoration before I, <laughs> that's kind of silly because as soon as you open it up, that's going to go flying out, but it sure is pretty. Okay, I'll find a use for that somewhere else or in a different project. Um, and we could even decorate the, like her, we could even decorate, you know, the envelopes some. Is this believe in yourself? I like that. That sounds like that was made for me. Wonder, where's the Velcro? Eh, don't really want it covering up. Maybe I will just put it on that inside pocket. I don't know if I was still in camera when I was playing with this. We'll just put it here on this inside pocket. And they just make sure the white edges have been inked just a touch there that makes me happy I'm gonna bring it up just a little so now we're just doing the fun part where I just decide how I want to decorate and of course if you don't have a paper kit you know just get out any of your um little journaling cards or make some ephemera that you like um some vintage like style kind of postcards would be cute. There's just, you know, all kinds of things that you can do um, with a folio like this. I was just kind of happy to have a project to um, use some of these papers um, that I've had for a while. I'm gonna put her there. And how about I think I'll glue her right here off center. I really love this pattern too. I need to find a way to use a little piece of that somewhere. And it breaks up um, all the pattern that I had going on. 
Um, oh, we've got stickers. I love stickers. Let's see if any of these will work. I'm sure they will. I mean, why wouldn't they, right? <laughs> Let's see. Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. Well, that is definitely something I can get behind. So let's just stick that right there. Cute. I'm gonna turn that that way. I'm gonna call that done for the cover. And let's see. I just said that and I may stick something else on there. I'm gonna use one of these. I think they're supposed to be like a little photo corner, but I kinda like highlighting the corners of these pockets just for fun and let's see all right so I could keep going right um, and adding the stickers and the different items here let's put one more because I just liked this little rose I'm gonna just stick it no. Well, I don't really like having the two circles. Oh, no. Where am I going to put it now? Let's see. How about right there? Just to get that. You got the oval, and then I've got a little circle there. Okay. I'll probably do more. I will probably add, I don't know, multiple cards and um, items inside these pockets, but that is my project for today. So if you enjoyed this one page wonder and are planning to make one, let me know, leave me a comment. I hope you guys find a use for them. Like I said, it comes together super fast. Build up your stash, have them on hand, enjoy and have a great time. So um, until next time, thanks for watching everybody. See ya.